Hello, this is Eric Strong again. Uh, this is the third lecture in this series on mechanical ventilation. And uh, this topic today is monitoring lung mechanics. Here are the learning objectives of this lecture. Uh, first, to understand the inspiratory airway pressures, uh, peak pressure and plateau pressure. Uh, second, uh, to understand how to use peak and plateau pressure to monitor airway resistance and lung compliance. Lung mechanics in the ambulatory patient are best measured in the pulmonary function lab. Now, however, intubated patients are unable to uh, cooperate with such testing. Therefore, additional strategies are needed, ones which use the ventilator as an advantage rather than a limitation. These strategies make use of the fact that measuring airway pressures is the most direct means to continuously monitor lung mechanics. Ventilation pressure which is a generic term for pressure delivered to the proximal airways by a ventilator, is equal to the sum of resistive pressure, which is the pressure required to push airflow through the airways, and the elastic pressure, which is the pressure required to inflate the lungs and chest wall. Note that this equation is more to demonstrate a concept rather than necessarily defining an exact mathematical relationship. However, it does illustrate the general principle that uh, increased ventilator pressures must be due either to difficulty in pushing airflow through the airways or difficulty inflating the lungs and chest wall. Although the ventilator cannot directly measure the resistive and elastic pressure, um, it can measure two related airway pressures, which can be used to help distinguish between increased airway resistance and increased lung elasticity um, lung elasticity is the inverse of lung compliance, which is a more commonly employed term at the bedside. The first of these two related airway pressures is peak pressure, which as the name implies, is the maximum pressure in the proximal airway at the end of inspiration. The second is called plateau pressure. This is the equilibrium pressure reached if the expiratory limb of the ventilator tubing is occluded at the end of inspiration. It is a surrogate for end inspiratory alveolar pressure. This diagram will make these pressures easier to understand. First, during passive inflation of the lungs under the positive pressure of the mechanical ventilator, the proximal airway pressure increases through inspiration. If at the moment inspiration is completed, the ventilator tubing is briefly occluded the relatively higher pressure in the airway will continue to drive a small amount of airflow into the relatively lower pressure in the alveoli. After a brief moment, the proximal airway pressure in the intra-alveolar pressure will reach an equilibrium. Finally, at the moment the occlusion to expiration is removed, the lung's elastic, uh, intrinsic elastic recoil will push air back out as airway pressure drops again. This maximum pressure at the termination of lung inflation or inspiration is the peak pressure. The equilibrium pressure achieved during the end inspiratory hold is the plateau pressure. It can be shown that the peak pressure is proportional to airway resistance and inversely proportional to compliance. While plateau pressure is inversely proportional to compliance and independent from resistance. Based on these relationships, one can conclude that peak pressure can be increased from either increased airway resistance or from decreased compliance, uh, while plateau pressure, on the other hand, can only be increased by decreased compliance. Therefore, if peak pressure is elevated and plateau pressure is not, it's highly suggestive that the patient's airway resistance is unusually high. It's actually possible to calculate the exact airway resistance and compliance. Uh, let's look at airway resistance first. If you recall from the last lecture, uh, airflow is equal to pr the pressure gradient divided by airway resistance. A simple rearrangement yields this. Uh, let's substitute in some variables which we can measure with a ventilator. So if you recall from two slides ago, during an inspiration hold, the pressure gradient driving airflow is the gradient between the peak pressure in the proximal airways and the intra-alveolar pressure for which the plateau pressure serves as a surrogate. The end inspiratory flow can be directly measured. Uh, you may have noticed that this equation yields the airway resistance during inspiration 
Um, unfortunately, there's actually no simple means to measure resistance during expiration, uh, despite the fact that expiratory resistance is usually more clinically relevant. While you may not remember this specific equation, and, and probably you shouldn't try to memorize it per se, uh, the key point here is that an increasing peak pressure in the absence of an increasing plateau pressure suggests airway resistance is increasing. If you determine that airway resistance is unusually high, some etiologies to consider include bronchospasm, excessive secretions, uh, a mucus plug, foreign body aspiration, or extrinsic airway compression. Now, how can we directly measure and monitor compliance? Also from lecture two, uh, you know that compliance is equal to the change in volume divided by the change in pressure. Let's expand the delta terms here. Also note that the compliance this will calculate is the compliance of the entire respiratory system, abbreviated RS, that is the sum of the contributions to compliance by the lungs and the chest wall. Uh, measuring compliance of the individual components is significantly more tricky uh, requires our pressure transducer in the esophagus and uh, is actually generally not done um, at most uh, centers. Looking at the numerator of this ratio, uh, you may have already realized that the difference between N inspiratory volume and N expiratory volume is simply the tidal volume. Not only is the tidal volume easy to measure with a ventilator, it is directly programmed into the ventilator by clinicians um, in most circumstances using uh, common vent modes. The end inspiratory pressure is the plateau pressure and the end expiratory pressure is known as PEEP. Uh, PEEP is an acronym for positive end expiratory pressure. It's also directly determined by the, the clinician and will be discussed in more detail in subsequent lectures. Please note that the PEEP here refers to total PEEP. That is the sum of the PEEP intentionally applied by the ventilator and something known as auto peep. Uh, if the term auto peep is unfamiliar to you, uh, it will also be discussed uh, at a future lecture, but it's essentially um, uh, peep that develops uh, unintentionally uh, due to a, very, uh, a variety of pathologic processes. Once again, it's not as important to memorize this equation as much as remembering that an increasing plateau pressure suggests that compliance is decreasing. Etiologies of decreased compliance of the respiratory system include pulmonary edema, uh, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, position of the endotracheal tube in the right mainstem uh, bronchus instead of the trachea, and ascites, or really any form of marked abdominal distension. So in summary, when uh, peak pressure is increased but plateau pressure is normal, it suggests that airway resistance is increased. When both peak pressure and plateau pressure are increased, it suggests that lung compliance is decreased. So that's the end of this lecture on monitoring lung mechanics. Uh, please continue on to the next lecture, which will discuss gas exchange. <laughs>